What's good YouTube, Mario Devon back with yet another video. So you've all seen me do a lot of content in this room and you've had so many questions about this room, what I do here and how it's all come together. So I wanted to do this video, I wanted to do a home studio tour so I can show you all the ins and outs of this place. And as you see, we got a little movement going on. So I have this camera on a slider and that'll be kind of the look for the rest of the video. But I wanted to show you around the studio and give you all the pieces. I wanted to break down the purpose of this space. Now, obviously you look around you think it's just to make content but I also live here obviously okay but I did want to prioritize this being my creative space to make content for YouTube and also for my business but what I want to focus on today is the very first studio room I call this studio room a so as you emerge from the hallway the hallway entrance this is the first room that you'll see I wanted it to be kind of like a, a like a grand reveal when you enter the hallway you come through and this looks like boom you see this large space filled with creative things that will help anyone make their content whether you are a video creator or even a musician it doesn't matter so I wanted to create a space not only for me but also for my friends whenever they needed a place to shoot or also you know make things it's a lot going on in this room so I wanted to make sure I break this room down in sections so you can see everything and I can explain you know the ins and outs of everything but also tell you about each product that is in the room let's start with the first thing and the most important thing in this room that is going to be the desk. All right, so let's start with the desk. Like I said, this is the most important part of any creative studio, okay? This desk is from Output. It's called the Platform Desk, okay? So this, keep in mind, I've been a music producer for about 15 years, so I always like to have music production desks because even though I don't do it for a living as much like that, you know, I still like to cook up some beats every once in a while. The thing about this desk is it allows me to be both. I can be a musician, but also make sure I'm really good at the video creator, the content creator side of things. So, so this allows me to have plenty of desk space, okay? So I have a place to store my keyboard. I have a place to put my computer and put things on the desk. It's actually very functional, but I also have storage space that is all behind here. And I have another platform, no pun intended, where I can put this monitor and also my speakers. So for machines, let's talk about the brains of the operation, okay? So first thing is I use a PC when it comes to music production, okay? And the reason why I do that is because PCs allow you to have more RAM. And when you're running music and the sound effects and the VSTs, the instruments, you need more RAM. And that PC down here has about 128 gigs of RAM. It does this thing. Okay, that's not what you want to hear about as video creators. You want to know, what do I edit on? You already know the answer. We don't even have to play. I use the M1 MacBook Pro. Okay, that's the, that's the big boy. I use the M1 Max MacBook Pro specifically. And the reason why is because I have the Canon R5. I have the Sony FX3. I have the Sony FX6. And for my PC build that runs on an Intel chip, it just does not do proper things for me. It does not work. All right, so we had to go ahead and upgrade. Now, spoiler alert, and we're gonna do a separate video talking about my experience. I've never owned anything MacBook, okay? I've owned iPhones. I now have an iPad because of my experience with my MacBook Pro, but I'm telling you, it is my first Mac machine ever. And we're gonna talk about that in another video, but just wanted to let you know. That is, these are the brains of the operation. Just know Steve Jobs, you know, <laughs> I'm a believer now, okay, my bad, all right, I have so much more respect for you now, sir, and I already had love and respect for you, but now it's it's, it's, out, it's off the chain now, buddy. So one of the things I get a lot of questions about, and I'm actually shocked that I get these questions about this, is going to be my monitor. This is the 49-inch Samsung Odyssey G9, okay, the G9 Odyssey. I can't get it, you know, you know what it is. You'll see it in the description below. Now, I would tell you that this thing is expensive, okay? Thing about it is, when you have something like an M1 Mac, all right, it has the best monitor. It has the best screen that you can get on any computer machine. You know, Apple just does their thing. You need something that pairs with it well because of calibration. So I wanted to have something that was color accurate, something that was very sharp, but also something that would allow me to put four windows up, but also use Premiere Pro in a way where I can use the entire screen to edit video even easier. Again, this is a really, really sharp monitor, but the only way you can get the full potential of that monitor is you have to make sure you use a display port, which I use for the PC. There's a display port here. I have a Thunderbolt 2 display port that goes into the M1 Mac, and it's it's, wow. 
Is that what the kids say, chef's kiss? It's beautiful, okay? All right, so in this section of the video, we're gonna call this miscellaneous items. And the reason why we're gonna call this is because I have a lot of random things going on on this desk and I wanna break things down for you so it's very clear. Again, I'm gonna have everything in the description below. First thing we're gonna talk about is here on this desk, I keep a drum machine. I love having drum machines just because, again, I'm a music producer, so I like to have that kind of textile feel of me kind of getting into the groove. This is what I'm doing right now, is getting into the groove. That's how I be. I be like, ah, I'm going at it. I like to have something that I can feel, something that I can really get that feedback of, of how it feels to do drums, okay? The next thing on the list that I have is a compressor, okay? That's not going to make sense to a lot of you, but I use the compressor to actually compress vocals. So if you know anything about vocals, I'm gonna try to say this very quickly. If you know anything about vocals, you know, our voices go up and down, up and down, and you will see the audio file do that. The whole point of a compressor is to allow your vocals to kind of come in evenly and everything sounds good, no distortion, you can keep everything peaking. But I use the WA-2A from Warm Audio. It is an emulation of the Telephonics LA-2A. It's a legendary compressor, okay, it's very expensive, not nearly affordable for most people, but that is the reason why I got the WA-2A, more affordable version of an already legendary compressor. Another thing that I use to like monitor audio, because I love to make sure my audio is crispy even in my videos, you watch my videos, you know that. I use the Yamaha HS8. I have obviously two of them on each side of this desk. Uh, they are a big help, not only on the music production side, but also in just the sound design side. I wanna make sure things are panned and evened out. They have a really, really flat EQ, but these things can get really loud. I'm talking about super loud. I've never turned these things more than like maybe a quarter of the power. These things are super loud, and I don't even know how people can use them at full power. All right, another thing in this desk, again, I told you, you have all these little storage units here. I have two audio interfaces. The reason why I have two, I have one, again, for music production, but I have a second one that is for the MacBook Pro. And the reason why I have that second one is just so I can not only get clean audio for voiceovers when I'm doing video work, but I also like to make sure I have a professional sound when I'm listening to things, okay? When I'm, when I'm mixing vocals, when I'm mixing my video, my sound design, and just making sure everything sounds good, especially for things like podcasts or even things like me talking on this microphone right now. I like to have professional audio things that allow me to get the best sound. A big thing I love about this iPad is it's very multifunctional. Okay, so I use it as a computer sometime in meetings. I love to take notes with it. I always love to like keep up with my clients as far as like showing them different reports, updates, that type of thing. But I also love to edit with this thing. Not edit video, but edit photos. Another reason I love having this thing is actually to use it on something like this FX3. The thing about the iPad is I can run an app called Monitor Plus will allow me to connect to the FX3. It also would do the same thing with the A7 IV. And I can control the camera fully from here, all right? I'm doing this right now on my iPhone, but I love, I love, love, love doing it way more on my iPad because, you know, there you go. Also love to take notes in this thing. I use Notion. I love to take notes for my scripts. Right now, I could even read my scripts while we're talking, right? I'm not right now because I'm that good, but I'm just saying this thing is a multi-purpose machine. I also have the bougie Apple Pencil. You but there you go. M1, iPad Pro, love using it. Love it, love it, love it. So here on this here arm, all right, this blue Yeti arm, legendary arm, you see it in a lot of podcasts, is my Shure MV7, okay? So the Shure MV7 is multifunctional. It is an XLR mic, but it's also a USB mic, okay? I love this microphone because I get really clear, clear, clear sound through USB, which is, to me, not a very common thing to be able to do, but nowadays, technology is advancing. You can get better sounding things via USB. So I use this mic here for a lot of my voiceover work when I'm right here at the desk. I'm able to read off my scripts and just go from there. It's not really something that is uh, uh, makes it an inconvenient thing to do when it's right here in front of you and you can just kind of record directly into your video footage. So the way this is connected, again, is USB. I have my USB docking station back here. I'll also show you all that thing down below in the description. Only thing I would recommend is that you change out the, 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 the muffler. Not the muffler. Oh my God, a pop filter. I'm a, I, I might as well just give up the music career. I mean, because I don't even know what this thing is called. But the pop filter, change it out just because the one that it comes with, the Pelosos, the p p p this is, this. all of those are a little bit more apparent in the stock, you know, pop filter. So you want to go ahead and replace that so you can get a creamier, you know, smoother sound. All right, so I told you before about this desk and that it has all these places to store things. Again, it does have a place to store my MIDI keyboard. This MIDI keyboard is from Artura. 
I think that's how you pronounce it, Artura. And it's a key lab 61 uh, in Mark II. I miss a lot to these names now, okay? But I stored this keyboard down here. This is directly connected to my PC for music production, okay? I know, music production. All right, so if you know anything about audio, anything, you know how important it is. Your, your headphones, okay? So I use the AKG, and let me show you these things. I use the AKG K702s, okay? I actually just got these, because I actually had these here, AKG 701. Ones. I've had these for like 10 years and I just never replaced them because they've never been a problem. Now, what's funny is comparing these two is they sound the same, okay? They sound exactly the same. It's just interesting that I've been able to take care of my headphones so well that, you know, even over 10 years, they still sound good, sound the same, okay? But I do have the AKG 702s. These are now my main headphones. I love the way they look. They got a little vibe to them. So even over here, all right, I do have other headphones. I have the Audio Technicas and I also have two other other AKG headphones and the reason why I have those is because well I'm not the only person that's listening if I if I'm working on music it's usually I'm working on music for someone I'm not the only person just trying to listen to the audio so I like to have multiple headphones for anyone all right so this is the Aventone CV12 I keep this here because again I do work on music and I do have artists that come over hence I have all the extra headphones right here so use the Aventone CV12 is actually known for being called the Taylor Swift mic it's the mic that she takes with there when she goes on tour and still wants to record music, okay? So, also I have an isolation chamber. This one is made by Pile Audio. I love using this because it is a small, compact chamber. I used to actually build vocal booths, okay? That, that was a nightmare. So this allows me to have a more convenient way. And also I have some soundproofing here on the wall too. I'll show you that in, in some B-roll. So as far as this, you probably see in the shot, I do have a TV over here. So the space is big enough to have a TV and I have an entertainment center. I never use it. This is actually where I put my whiteboard in a lot of cases. So I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV, guys. I'm sorry, I'm just like creating, I'm just doing things. So in this portion of the video, I'm gonna sit down and just talk about the different components in the room as far as the furniture, okay? Well, I wanna talk about the room, not just the tech that is on the desk, but the actual room. Where we're gonna start is one of the things that most of you have questions about all the time when it comes to, you know, my videos, and that's going to be the lighting, okay? So I have a lighting set up in this room, in studio room A, and we'll get to studio room B another time. Time, but lighting is one of my things, okay? It's always been one of my themes in my videos. So with my floor lamps, these are actually very affordable. They're from Mainstays, all right? If you know this brand, you know they kind of make cheaper floor lamps and cheaper products for people, you know, to still keep it bougie, but on a budget, okay? Bougie on a budget. So I use my RGB lights, my bulbs to go in them because that, that paper allows the light to spread more out and also up. So it kind of feels in a room. I have three of those and I will let you know I've had these for like five years and they, they still work. I'm shocked but they still work even though they were maybe like $30 each. So as far as lighting that I use to make content, okay, I always keep two VL150s in the room. That is from Godox. Now in all, I think I have four VL150s from Godox and one VL200, but I love to keep them in studio. I love to keep two in here because I like to make content with them. I need lights just in case I'm gonna have them at the desk if I'm doing like a conference call or I wanna have them when I'm making content, whether I'm using it, you know, in the room here or even right now. I'm using one right now to kind of light the room. You didn't even know that, but there you go. I'm using one right now. Now, I love to also use them when I'm using my backdrop, which I'm gonna get to in a moment, but be patient, we're gonna get there. So now when I move over here, you'll see that we have the LiFX light up here. This is the light beam from LiFX, I think it's L-I-F-X, but they make a lot of different RGB products. Okay, so I use this light in my old studio, all right? You would see this light in the background of my YouTube video. So moving to this new place, I still wanted to have a place for it. I really don't use it as much as I would and should in a lot of my videos now, just because like, well, I have this room here, okay? And as you, as you can see in this room, we, <laughs> All right, we're gonna get to this room in another video, okay? We're gonna, this is gonna be episode two. Don't worry about that. So we're back on this side of the room and I wanted to talk about the couch, okay? I think this couch is from All Modern, okay? I'll make sure to put a link down in the description to make sure we're accurate. Now, think about this couch. It was actually supposed to be temporary. This is a $1,500 couch and I know that sounds crazy that it was going to be a placeholder, okay? I wanted to wait until I could get the Rove Concepts couch that was gonna be more of a cream color, about the same size, but it's gonna 
fit the aesthetic a little better. But looking at the budget, I really wanted to spend more money on maybe something like the Odyssey G9. I wanted to spend more money on the creative stuff that was going to make me money. And I felt like this couch was not going to be something that was going to be really, you know, a requirement for the work that I was doing. So while we're here, you know, we're here with the couch, I'm going to bring you this chair. Okay. So this chair, I actually really love this chair way more than I thought I would. Okay. So you would think this is a secret labs chair. It is not. Although it is made in the same factory is all the secret labs chairs the, the batman the omegas all of those so this is another amazon find so there are various things i love about this chair obviously i love that it has a pillow the pillow has always stayed on it's not come off not one time also love the lumbar support that's here and i love the design okay if you look at it really closely it's got a nice little 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 the weave i love it it feels very good so it's a more affordable version of the secret labs chair that we all know and love so you'll be shocked it is 405 p.m. is very sunny outside okay and we're shooting this content in this room and it feels like it's nighttime but I promise you it's super bright outside the reason this works the reason why this is possible is because of these blackout curtains all these curtains you see these are all windows okay so there's a lot of natural light that can come into this space if I want it to all I have to do is just move those curtains back but for content creating you want to be able to control your light but these are another Amazon find I have them all over my apartment so every room that has a window all right, they have a set of these curtains on them. I love the way they look. They really set the mood as far as like the design aspect. I could have easily gotten some just regular all black blackout curtains and it would have been just fine. But I wanted to add a little pizzazz on there. Okay, I'm a real big fan of fashion design, interior design. So I wanted to add a little style to the room. Okay, and this is where these blackout curtains come in. So they'll be in the description below too. They come in all kinds of colors. They do come in black. That is not gold. They come in black and white. They come in Navy, they come in all white, they come in all kinds of colors, but I'll make sure to put them down below just for you. All right, y'all, I know we've been going through this thing like crazy and it's a lot going on, but we're almost there. All right, the last thing in this room that I'm gonna show you that I feel like it's worth your time is going to be the rug. The reason why, two reasons why I love to have a rug. Number one is I like to be able to soak up sound, okay? Rugs on the floor, especially a wooden floor like this. This is an all wooden floor. You need something that's going to soak up sound. A rug helps do that because if you just have that hardwood, a lot of that audio is just gonna bounce off, okay? So you wanna, you wanna make sure you kind of soak up as much sound as you can. That's number one. Number two, I love when people come over, they sit on the couch, they take their shoes off, and this is a shag rug, so they take their shoes off and they just, they get comfortable, okay? So I like to make my studio spaces not only functional, not only creative, but they need to feel a little, little homey, okay? So this rug allows it to feel a little bit more like home, okay? Things like a couch, okay, guys, fellas, fellas, okay? Things like couches, rugs, you know, candles, you know, uh, tables, these things make a space feel like a home, okay? So I'm just saying, you know, splurge a little bit. Try to add a little spice to your space. So we're in the opposite direction of the room. What you'll see is this oversized mirror. What I love about this oversized mirror is number one, I can get in the mirror and I can see my look for the day, obviously. But I love when people come over, they always get a good selfie. I create content with this thing. I love to just be on my Instagram and just kind of like boom and everything. It's a little, it's a statement piece, man. I've always in my life, I've always wanted an oversized mirror and I would tell you this is not a requirement in your place you could have put anything else on this wall I chose an oversized mirror just because that's the vibe I wanted I love fashion and I want to be able to see my looks every day I can't help it y'all I'm bougie like that okay so what you'll notice on this side you'll notice sneaker tower okay we'll talk about sneaker tower in just a second but you notice that this C stand has wheels a lot of the things in this apartment has wheels in the studio my countertop you know I have a, an island that has wheels. I have my shirt rack that has wheels. I have a tripod and I have C-stands in here that have wheels and that helps it be even more functional when I want to move things around. Helps me out a lot. So let's talk about sneaker tower. One of the things I've always dreamed of having. Okay, so I'm a big sneaker head. I'm going to tell you all something about me that's very personal. I grew up very poor. And when you grow up very poor, one of the things is you always end up buying shoes from Walmart, okay? Walmart, your clothes are from Walmart, and you, you can't afford really nice things. So we never spent money on Jordans, okay? So I never owned a pair of Jordans in my life until I was maybe 24. And I'm a huge basketball fan. Like, if, if I had another job in life, being a sportscaster mainly talking about basketball would be that career. That was That is a dream job that I still may do at some point in my life. But the reason why Sneaker Tower 
power exists is because I'm a big sneaker head. I love to collect sneakers. I love the way sneakers look. I love the vibe. If you can't tell, like I love weird sneakers. I, I, I'm a big time fashion dude. What's interesting is most people didn't know that this place actually has a fully functioning kitchen, okay? So I have a, a rolling countertop here. I have all this counter space that goes from here and all the way around this space. Full sink, like it is a fully functioning kitchen. I'm gonna show you some B-roll of some of the kitchen just so you can see and get the feel of it. But also like to put things over to the side when I'm not using them, like my coffee table and, and even this here shirt rack. So understand something about me. This is the space where I do a lot of my content. So one of the things I love to do is batch record into this space. So maybe I'm gonna do maybe three to five videos a day whenever I'm recording and I like to change shirts. So that y'all don't know, it's a different day. But the other thing is I'm a very fashionable person. I love to have clothing that is very clean, that fits the aesthetic. See, I have this camo on and I have these shoes and I have this shirt. And speaking of this shirt, like I love this shirt. The reason why I love this shirt is because it gives me the look that I need, but it also fits me very well, as you can see. And these shirts provided by my friends over at Cuts Clothing. Okay, so let me tell you about Cuts. Cuts makes the best t-shirts you can ever find. They not only make t-shirts, they make polos, they also make hoodies, long sleeves. They have all types of shirts and they have all types of colors. Right now, you can get one of the summer colors like this white. We also have this nice, nice green right here, this nice sage right here, okay? I actually wear these almost every day. I wear them when I'm working with clients, I wear them to meetings. I also wear them when I'm also making content for you all, okay? I have a Cuts shirt on right now. This white color right now is Cuts Clothing. Not only do they make dope clothing for the fellas, they also got the new ladies drop. The Cuts Women just dropped, okay? It's funny because the same moment that a girl was telling me, man, I wish Cuts made something for women, that same moment Cuts made the post on their Instagram announcing that they had Cuts Women coming out. So go ahead, use that description down below, okay? It'll give you 15% off. You can also use Mario Devon at checkout. That'll give you that same 15% off. Go ahead, go ahead and indulge and enjoy yourself some Cuts clothing. Thank you Cuts for sponsoring this video and more to come with my team. Now back to this rack, okay? I love having this rack just because anytime I need to make a change for the next video or the next topic, I can go ahead and make these changes really quickly. I even keep a steamer over here just so I can prep the shirts so they can look good on camera. So there you go. I advise you, if you are a single content creator, I advise you to get you a rolling rack and you to keep it in your place, you know, to keep it in your filming space so that you can always be ready so you can look good, feel good, be good. You know what I mean? Now, please excuse the chaos over here. I actually moved all this stuff over here so I can have space to film that portion of the video. So yeah, I did that for you guys, all right? I did that for you. All right, we're almost done. Earlier in the video, you saw the TV and I told you that I usually keep my whiteboard over there or even over here by the couch, okay? This is my whiteboard. I love to visualize things. For me, visualizing the tasks that I need to do for the day, for the week, the things I need to get done, I love to have a whiteboard so I can illustrate those things, so I can see those things. So here you go. This is my whiteboard. Love having it around. I put all of the client work that I need to get done on it. As you can see, I got a lot of things to do, but I'm over here filming this video because I love y'all. Now, on the other side, this thing is flippable. Like I said, everything will be in the description below. I keep all the things that I'm working on specifically for my company and also these videos. So the content you see on YouTube, the content you see on my Instagram, these are things that are thought out. These are things that are scheduled. These are things that need to get done. Done. Another thing that I do, this is just a quick note. I separate my whiteboard from the things that are for me, for Dojo Media, into doing, building, and business. So doing are the things that, that, that you have to get done, you know, tomorrow, this week, you know, maybe even in the month. But your building are things that are gonna feed into your future. So that's the way I like to organize my tasks and, you know, they keep you organized, man. I love to have this whiteboard, okay? So I'm gonna move this out of the way because now you know. But again, I'm gonna put that in the description below so you can have that too. Okay, last thing. And guess what? This thing has now become just as important as my desk lately. I will say that you have seen many videos where I have the kind of the black backdrop thing going on. And I'm usually using v flash But I've always wanted, always wanted, is to have my own backdrop set up. So here you go. What I can easily do whenever I'm ready to film a video, and usually I have this thing taped, all right? So I usually just can grab this and I can just pull this down. Most of you are gonna wonder why did not I buy the remote control version of it? Well, the reason why is because it's like budget. Once again, I go right back to that thing, budget. You gotta watch out for your budget. And for me, it was like, 
that is an easy thing to do. I didn't have to spend $500 on this. This one was actually like $150. So we saved a lot of money, but I still get the same functionality, okay? So the thing about this is I didn't have enough space on the wall to mount this to the wall, so I took a risk, all right? Sorry, apartment complex, I'm so sorry. I actually mounted it to my ceiling, okay? So sorry, I did it, like, I'm sorry, okay? But it needed to be done, and I needed to have a backdrop space that I can use so I can create dope content for my people, okay? So there you go. I hope this video has been insightful. I hope this is also giving you a little bit of inspiration of what to do when you want to do your own home studio. So everything will be down in the description below. I'm doing this shot on purpose, okay? This is foreshadowing. Next video, we're going to not only talk about the living quarters, but the main pieces of this video is going to be this room here. This is the main filming room for podcasts and all kinds of other content that I do. So this is also where I keep a lot of gear. Not only will we be talking about the room in itself, we're going to talk about the gear. So I keep a lot of my gear here, a lot of rigs, cameras, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to talk about those things in the next video. But yeah, it's a little foreshadowing for what's to come, okay? The likes, everything, okay? So thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe to your boy. And I hope this video helps. Thank you so much for watching. I love you.